Hi guys, okay, so this is day four or five. I'm not sure exactly where we're at, but um, I'm feeling pretty good now because, well, Ross has been really lethargic and confused all of today. So today was um, the day after the surgery. Day, the day is the day after the surgery. I stayed here all last night um, after he was shouting for me. Um, so I've slept in intensive care all night, exhausted. I'm still really tired. Um, when I walk, he was still not really responding. He was saying stuff that wasn't really like making much sense. So they were a bit concerned about that N neurologically. They didn't know what was going on. Um, not that that's totally like unexpected, but they just wanted to check. So they weren't going to get him on an MR in an MRI because he's being really combative. They call it. Um, basically, he's kicking off, and um, it took five of them to hold him down. So. They didn't fancy trying that again in an MRI. So they did a CT and the surgery seems to have gone to plan. The surgeon's very confident with the surgery itself. He just said, um, I'm very pleased. It was very straightforward. Um, I don't know what that means in terms of size of the tumour, what's gone or anything yet. Weirdly, I didn't really ask, but I think it's because we. I trust that they're doing, they're getting out as much as they possibly can. We don't expect them to get it all out. It's a debunk. And... Um, Okay, so yeah, so the last 10 minutes, um, he moved a bit more and the nurses moved him up the bed and he didn't know what they were saying and I said something and he went, oh, shut up. And they went, oh, they thought he was being a bit inappropriate. And I was like, no, no, it's fine. That's, that's normal. Um, he told me to shut up um, for chatting. And then I kind of spoke to him a little bit more and I told him that I got the 21 pound that his dad was in for a bet and he laughed um, which hurt him because he's like swollen and his mouth's all like to one side and stuff and um, every time he yawns he's like my head my head's really hurting which is understandable um, so they're giving him some more morphine and um, he told his mum that she looked different um, and then said she looked 10 years younger and then a bit later I was saying can you see can you see out your eyes because he's not really opening anything he's all really like drowsy and he just said, you're beautiful, um, aren't they? So he was just talking like normal. Um, what else did he say? That's it, give a thumbs up. But that's the most responsive that he's been and just that it was him, you know, because with frontal lobe operations and frontal lobe tumours, you don't know who you're getting back. And although this is early, early doors, um, it's good news, it's really good news, really, really positive. Um, just, yeah, it, I didn't necessarily come in here that positive today because I went home for a little bit and when I came back it didn't seem like much changed and they were talking about him being confused and talking about him not holding his left arm up properly or something and I was thinking, oh God. And they're saying, you know, it could be 10 days before we get any neurological signs of what's happening with Ross and whether it's still Ross there um, Ross as we know him um, but that's all of the stuff that was just said there you know he remembered that his dad owed him money he was understanding stuff um, he hasn't got many wires on him now and they're talking about potentially moving him on to high dependency so just yeah I'm exhausted I spent some time with the girls today which was great and Brooke said, uh, I could, she said, I'm gonna blow a kiss to dad, you don't need to take it because you might lose it. She said, I'll blow it and you don't need to know where, it just, it knows where to go and it only recognizes dad, so it will stick to him when, it will stick on his hand, she said, when it finds him and then Texas did the same, but she blew it really fast to make it speed up to catch up with Brooks. Um, so that was nice to see them. Um, my dad's flown over from Georgia near Russia and that's where he works um, so it was a nice surprise to see him. Everybody's, you know, we've incredible, incredible, incredible friends and family and you lot for messaging us such amazing messages of support. I can't tell you how much it means, it really, really matters. And for the tiny few divs that comment on, commented on the Daily Mail article, as they always do, the troll ones. Um, and said things like, you shouldn't tell your children the, se the severity of stuff. First off, dickheads. I'm not a moron. 
I know that, I didn't. I'm not talking to my children as adults, but I've given my children respect enough to know that my husband's in hospital. We don't deny that things are happening, that would be really unfair. Um, other thing that was um, said, sorry, my battery's gone. Um, she trying to promote her career. Mm, first of all, two and a half years ago, I had to stop doing act, TV acting. Unfortunately, that's, you know, that's the way it is for now. I'm not promoting my fucking career. So don't be ridiculous. A few of the comments, um, I didn't go scrolling for them or anything, but my sister told me. Um, but yeah, most of you guys are amazing and sent me lovely stuff and support and positive stories. I don't want to hear negative stories, sorry guys. I don't want to hear about people that have died of stuff and horrible things have happened. Just send me positive stuff. But yeah, so that's my day and yeah, small things. But it's like big, it feels big. It feels like a win, a massive win. And you know, if things keep going, I know it's just one foot in front of the other, but it's good, it's positive. So thank you guys, switch your soon.